Yes, both gravity and electric forces have very large, perhaps infinite, range. However, macroscopic objects always have approximately equal amounts of positive and negative charge, so electric forces almost completely cancel on a large scale. There are also nuclear forces. These have a tiny range, which is why we never experience or observe them directly. They're important, however. Without them, the only stable nucleus would be hydrogen. So, no stars, no planets, no physicists. Help! Turn those nuclear forces back on! Thank you. On the scale of planets and stars, all we need are Newton's laws of motion and his law of gravity. All of our space exploration has been calculated to fabulous precision using just Newton's laws. But now it's time to warn you about the limitations to Newton's laws and to give you an idea of when it's safe to use them. Newtonian mechanics is fine, provided that the speeds are very much less than that of light. At speeds comparable with C, we must use Einstein's relativity. And to put that in perspective, a jet airliner travels at a bit less than a millionth of the speed of light. Newton's gravity also becomes imprecise in extreme conditions. It's fine, providing that the magnitude of the gravitational potential energy is much less than mc squared. Otherwise, we must use Einstein's theory of gravity, called general relativity. And to put that in perspective, potential energy over mc squared at the Earth's surface is less than one in a billion. Important to note, however, that applications like satellite navigation require much higher precision than one part in a billion, so relativistic calculations are absolutely necessary. On the small scale of the quantum world, Newtonian mechanics is not so much erroneous as irrelevant. Quantum calculations introduce Planck's constant h. Quantum phenomena become important when momentum times size is comparable with Planck's constant. This is usually OK for whole molecules, but it's almost never OK for electrons. Further, the last calculation that you did shows a problem on a galactic scale. To explain the rotation of galaxies, we have to imagine some new form of matter, dark matter, or else abandon Newtonian mechanics on that scale. Astronomers and cosmologists generally favour the former. Finally, on the largest observable scale, it seems that the rate of expansion of the universe is accelerating, which is exactly opposite to the prediction of Newtonian gravity. Don't be worried by these limitations. Instead, be excited. There is still more interesting physics to be discovered, perhaps by you. Well, this is the last lesson from me. There'll be more mechanics in Phys 1b and in higher years when you do quantum mechanics, more classical mechanics, and statistical mechanics. But this section on mechanics will be followed by sections on thermal physics, waves and oscillations. By the way, waves and sound takes you to my area of research on the physics of the voice, the ear and musical instruments. And we have a big website on that too. But of course, there's a whole universe of physics and its applications. And we hope that you'll be looking at the physics around you with a new analytical eye. Perhaps you're doing this course because you will study to become a scientist, an engineer, technologist or a teacher, which is great because the world needs those. However, whatever you do after this, we wish you good studies, a good career and a good life.